Welcome back to another Blender tutorial and today I'm going to be showing you something that you might have seen people use out there and it's called a shader ball. Essentially it's just a ball with some fancy um, bits to it, in this case it's pretty basic, and a floor, a backdrop, some lights and a camera and it's usually what you can use when you're testing out some materials. So for example you might be trying out a different material you want to do procedurally and then you just have this blend file with this shader ball and this lot, the lights, the setup and everything ready to go. So every time you just take this blank blend file and you can mess around with some materials. Another reason I'm making this, in the future I'm going to be doing some more procedural stuff and procedural materials and then I can just give you guys the link to this video where I show you how to make this nice studio with the lights, the setup, so it's just ready to go for you guys. So um, if this is something you want to learn, how to make a shader ball, Go ahead, if you don't want to make it, you can check on Blendswap, there's a ton of shader balls on there. Um, there's a lot of free ones on the internet, so by all means you don't have to use this boring one here. Um, you can be a lot more elaborate. So let's get into this tutorial and I hope you guys um, find it useful. So if a new scene opened up in Blender, we're going to hit A to select everything and let's hit X and delete. So we have a nice empty scene here and let's start by going Shift A and let's go to our mesh primitives and let's just add in a UV sphere. Now when it comes to the settings here, we'll just leave them as they are, they're fine. We'll add some subdivision to this in a bit. But what we can do, now technically you could just use this ball as it is when you're using it for shader ball and you're putting material on it but having some little grooves in it, some little features um, really helps you see your material displayed a little bit better across the surface. So there are different ways you can do this. We're going to tab into edit mode and one simple little feature is to go to your edge select here and make sure everything is deselected and then if you just hold in shift and alt you can click on any one of these edges. So I'm going to click on this one down here. Right? So about one, two, three, four down. And then we're going to go Control B to bevel it. So Control B or Command B. Let's go with a bevel like that and just click. Now, if we go E to extrude, right click to let go. And then we can go Alt S. And if Alt S, we can scale in along the normals. Now, you can either take it out, which is a cool feature, or you can take it in. So I'm going to take mine in like that. And now I'm going to go to my subdivision surface, my modifiers here, and I'm going to add a subdivision surface modifier to smooth things out. So now I'm going to tab out and I can see that's what I have. So I'm going to go to object and I'm just going to enable shade smooth. Now this is pretty cool but I'm going to, you know, you, you could do this and, and you know, that'll be good enough. But one thing you can do and it's optional, you can come back in here and you can go shift alt again and you can click on an edge here, it'll loop select it and click on this edge. Then you can go control B or command B and you can bevel these guys here like that to tighten them up a bit. You can also come here to the top and select this vertex here by going to your vertex select, clicking on the vertex and then going control plus one or two times, up to you. And then you can go E to extrude that down. And then you can just select this loop here and go control B to bevel it a little bit to tighten that up. And that's another little feature, but that's a very simple way of adding some detail to your shader ball. Now the rest is simple. We're just gonna go into our right orthographic view by hitting free on a number pad. And let's take this one up till it's sitting on our floor. And let's just go R negative four five and hit enter. So all we've done now is we've rotated it to 40 to five, 45 like this. So we're in our right orthographic view. So if you go into your front view now, you should see this. Now you really could rotate it any way you want. It doesn't really matter. That's just kind of how I prefer to do it. Now what we're going to do is we're going to make a little foot around here. A lot of shader balls come with like a foot at the base um, to also help display the material. So let's go shift A and let's just add in a simple um, circle. And we're going to just tab in to edit mode. And then we're going to go E to extrude, S to scale. About that much, up to you. And then all we're going to do is select these two verts at the front. And we're going to hit X and just simply delete them. Now all you have to do is hit A to select everything and then E to extrude. And this is extruded up like so. About that much and then if you go shift alt and you click on one of these edges you can loop select them and then hit G twice so double G and if you do that you can slide along the edge you're going to slide it like that and now instead of beveling all of this manually let's go to add modifier and let's give it a bevel and let's tab out into object mode again and now all we have to do is come here to the amount of the bevel and bring it down uh, let's go with something like that completely up to you and let's increase the segment count 
And let's give it a subdivision surface modifier. Go to object and then enable shade smooth. So now that's all nice. So now we have a shader ball here. Pretty cool. So let's add some lighting, a backdrop, things like that, a camera. So let's go um, shift A, let's quickly add in a plane. Now let's scale that plane up about that much. And then we're gonna tab into edit mode. And in our back here, we're just gonna select these two verts here and we're gonna go G, Y, and we're gonna move them back a bit, just a little bit. Then we're gonna go E to extrude and Z and bring it up. And then with these two verts still active, we're just gonna go G, Y, and move them back a little bit. And now just select these two middle verts and go Control B or Command B and use the bevel feature and just roll your middle mouse button to add some more loops. So just something like that. Then hit A to select everything and then go S, X, and scale it on the X a bit. Tab back out. And let's go to Object and enable Shade Smooth. Now we're gonna hit A to select everything. And we're gonna go Control A and we're gonna apply the scale. The reason we're applying the scale, when we're working with um, procedural materials especially, it looks at the scale of these objects in the scene to determine how it displays um, the material or the generated material across the, the surface, especially when you're working with like your texture input nodes and stuff like that. So that's pretty important. So that's why we make sure to s apply the scale when we're scaling, especially in the object view. So now we have that, let's go into our front view and let's go shift A, add in a camera. And for me, I like to go to my camera settings and I'm gonna make the focal length 95. And I'm gonna go to my output and I'm gonna make the X resolution 1080 so now they're both 1080 on the X and the Y. And you can notice now that gives us a square aspect ratio. So let's grab that camera and go G, Y and move it back. And then G, Z and move it up. With the camera active, you can hit zero on your, in your um, keyboard. And that'll take you into camera view. So you can see we're in camera view. And with the camera still active, we're gonna hit R and then X and we can rotate it on the X. And let's rotate it down a bit and then G, Z, move it up. So this is completely up to you. You can move the camera however you want. So I'm gonna go something like that. And what I'm also gonna do while I have the camera active, and you can see I have my cursor in the middle here by default. So I'm gonna to go to my pivot transform. I'm gonna make it 3D cursor. So now if I have my camera active and I go R, Z, it's gonna rotate the camera around that pivot. So I'm gonna go like that. And once I'm happy, I'm just gonna go back and set it to median point. Now you could also alternatively rotate the sphere itself by selecting it and going R, Z, but I just prefer to rotate the camera and then have all of this stationary as it is. So there we have it. Now we have a shader ball, a backdrop, a camera. So now is the fun part. Let's go over to our output settings and let's make it cycles. We're gonna be making this for cycles. And if you do have a GPU in and make sure to enable it. You don't have to, you can leave it in CPU if you don't have a GPU. And what I like to do as well is I like to go to the denoising, enable it in the render, and I like to change it to optics as well. And then just save it. So now we have those render settings there. Um, but the main thing is that you change it to cycles, okay? That's the main thing. We're now gonna go Shift A, and we're gonna go to our lights, add in an area light. And let's go to our light settings. And let's make that 120. Now that's what I prefer for scale of the scene here. And then I'm gonna to go to my size and I'm gonna make it two meters. Okay, so now we're gonna go G and bring it up. Now one thing I'm gonna mention here, if you're not aware of this, the bigger you make the scale of your light, so if we hit Z and we go rendered, so you can see the bigger you make the scale, if I were to scale this up, the softer and more scattered the light becomes. And if we make it smaller, it becomes more pointy, a bit more of a sharper light. Now this could work against or for you, depending on what you're trying to do. Because we're going for more of a studio kind of lighting, the light is quite big compared to the scene we're trying to light here. Because we want a little bit more of a softer lighting. Uh, if you want to make it even bigger, you can go ahead. But I feel just something around two meters is fine for what we're doing. So I'm gonna just move the light over here at about a 45. Then if you go Shift D to duplicate, you can bring another light to the side, R to rotate it in, and then Shift D to duplicate one more light. And we're gonna put this one just at the top. So I'm just rotating and I'm hitting G to move, and I'm just placing one here at the top. Okay, so we have three lights. So if we go G, and so if we go Z and then go into rendered mode, we can see this. 
looks pretty cool but another thing you can do is you can go control B in your camera view control B and then click and drag and then by dragging over this you're going to limit the render to the camera so it kind of frees up our viewport a little bit so this looks pretty cool so what we're going to do now is we're just going to select our backdrop the plane here the floor it's sitting on and this is important we're going to go to our materials click new to give it a material let's just call it floor and we're simply going to come here to the base color and i like to make mine nice and gray like this and that's all it doesn't really matter because um, we don't have to do any sort of anything fancy with the material here because it's just so we can see our material or shadable against the background. It's just kind of annoying when you're making materials and you have a perfectly white background. But now you can see here we have the shadable and obviously you can see it has no materials on it, right? So that is for something you can do in the future. So now what we can do is we can save this shadable, this file somewhere in our computer. And in the future when I do a tutorial on materials, you guys can take this um, shadable studio and you can follow along. You already have a nice scene ready to go. And this is a nice little experimental studio, a little setup to test out some materials, especially procedural, since we didn't unwrap any of this stuff here. So I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial and um, stay safe. Check out some of my other content. I've got a ton of stuff, literally hundreds of videos, everything from character stuff to rigging to sculpting. It's all on my channel. So I'll see you guys next time for another tutorial.